Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. I hope all of you are safe and sound. Past couple of years have been rather unforgettable uh, for the whole world and, of course, the Indian entertainment industry. We lost many of our talented artists to heart attacks, and their sudden passing away sent shock waves amongst fans and their family and friends. People in their thirties and forties succumbing to heart attacks has become very frequent nowadays. As per a report. One in five heart attack patients today are younger than 40 years of age. Now that's an alarming situation. Naturally, given the situation today, people have lots of questions regarding heart health. On this World Heart Day, we have with us one of the most reputed cardiac surgeons of the country, Dr. Devi Prasad Shetty, who is the founder and chairman at Narayana Hridaye Group of Hospitals. Dr. Shetty's, Dr. Shetty's contribution to make quality healthcare affordable for all has drawn global recognition. He is the recipient of several prestigious awards, including the Padma Bhushan and Padma Shri. In association with the government of Karnataka, Dr. Shetty pioneered Yashashwini, a very inexpensive micro health insurance scheme benefiting more than 3.4 million rural people. Speaking of health insurance, our other panelist for the day is Mr. Krishnan Ramachandran, Managing Director and Chief Executive Officer of Neva Bupa Health Insurance Company Limited, which was formerly known as Max Bupa Health Insurance. So Ramachandran is an industry veteran and a well-recognized name in the health insurance space. He has over 25 years of extensive experience across health insurance, healthcare, and life sciences industries. And has played a key role in shaping the evolution of health insurance industry in India. Dr. Shetty, heart attacks are on the rise in younger and seemingly fit people. What could be the possible reasons? Uh, first of all, there has always been heart attack in India. Because we are genetically three times more vulnerable than uh, Caucasians, and we develop heart attack at a much younger age, and we are a country of 1.3 billion people, so naturally there is a high heart attack is on the rise, at least awareness. Now, what is disturbing is the young fit people developing heart attack. Now, so many times when. Some film actors or some athletes or somebody dies; it becomes a sensation. How could they die? Such a fit person with six packs and big muscles, jumping up and down on the treadmill. How could they die? Sadly, their death could have been predicted ten years earlier, if only they had a simple test called CT angio. In India. Everyone believes, not only in India, across the world, everyone believes that how fit I am is directly related to how well I feel about myself, how fit I feel. But people have to understand that just because you are feeling good, you are feeling great, you have no problems, that doesn't mean anything. You can stand in front of me saying that I climbed Mount Everest. Five times in the last one month, I am a fit person. I will say that you have climbed Mount Everest. That's very good, but it has nothing to do with your fitness. If I, if you want me to say you are a fit person, get me the blood test report, get me a echocardiogram, a ECG, and a CT angio. I'll have a look at it. If that is good, then I will tell you you are a fit person. So until Indians accept. That they need to see a doctor when they are fit, not when they are unwell, right? This kind of a so-called sudden heart attack happening on the stage or in a gym will continue to happen. According to statistics, between the years 2000 and 2016, the heart attack rate increased by two percent every year in the age group of people younger than 40. Of late. Have you observed similar trends specific to heart diseases among your policyholders? That is true, Ranjit. First of all, thank you for having me on the show, and uh, a pleasure and a privilege to be with you, Dr. Devi Shetty. 
Uh, to answer your question, uh, Ranvijay, the answer is yes. Uh, if I look at claims cost okay. trends, even before COVID uh, and, and you know, for the duration of the health insurance industry, heart and heart-related ailments resulting in hospitalization have been amongst the top five reasons uh, why insurance companies get claims. Uh, that has not changed um, you know, for a very, very long time. And the reasons Dr. Shetty has, has very elaborately articulated. Uh, to your point on younger people, yes, anecdotally, as well as in the claims data, uh, there is evidence that younger people are being affected with heart disease and are getting hospitalized on that account. I think the other trend that I do want to point out uh, from our own claims data is the fact that, you know, we've always sort of felt that the preponderance of heart disease, um, you know, ends up afflicting more men than women. Uh, you know, uh, at least over the last few years, what we have seen in our own claims is women. There is an increasing incidence rates of uh, in of heart disease in our women uh, insured population as well. So I think that's the other very disturbing trend that we notice. And I think uh, to also put um, in perspective what uh, Dr. Shetty said, look, uh, don't go to a doctor when, when you're not well, go to a doctor when you're well. Equally, I think the implication as far as health insurance is concerned, don't think about health insurance when you fall sick, but think about health insurance when you're fit and well. I think that's the right time to think about it because the reality is that, and as COVID has taught us, everybody needs this. This brings me to a question, which is a cause of concern to many. It's said that coronavirus can also cause dangerous inflammation in the heart which prevents the heart from doing its job effectively. Uh, Dr. Shetty, can you explain what kind of impact COVID has had on our heart health? Is our heart weaker post-COVID outbreak? A fair number of uh, COVID patients uh, develop what we call as myocarditis. That is inflammation of the heart and the heart becomes very uh, irritated and it runs very fast. And when the heart runs very fast, patients do get breathless. Their exercise capacity goes down. So for weeks together following COVID, people, some people were unwell. Fortunately, the percentage of people who get affected is very, very small. But those who are affected, it had a significant impact. And a very tiny percentage of the patients with a pre-existing disease in the coronary artery they developed sudden blood clot formation in the heart vessel, leading to sudden heart attack. That instance also we have seen. But uh, as I said, uh, it's very difficult uh, uh, to know whether it's due to COVID or whether it would have happened. Every day in India, at least a few thousand people are getting heart attack. They would have got a heart attack anyway. But on the wow. whole, COVID definitely had an impact on the uh, heart on a small percentage of the people, but fortunately, almost all the patients we have seen have recovered eventually. That's a good news about uh, the COVID-induced heart problem. My next question is for Mr. Ramachandran. COVID-19 has been a tipping point for the insurance industry in general. How has it caused disruption in the health insurance space, especially in case of cardiac health? So broadly, Ranvijay, I think COVID-19 has been an inflection point on a number of things. And certainly, as Dr. Shetty, uh, you know, so, so well articulated uh, on the cardiac side as well. If I look at the broad arc of how COVID has been disruptive to the health insurance industry, uh, I would categorize it on three fronts. One clearly is awareness, right? I mean, Historically, pre-COVID, the people who would buy health insurance for people in their mid, mid-30s mid and, and 40s, and of course, the senior citizens. But COVID proved to be an inflection point in terms of more and more young people coming in to buy insurance because, you know, they, they saw and recognized that, look, this is here's a disease that does not spare anyone. So I think the general lift in awareness has been one inflection point as far as COVID is concerned. The second one is, of course, what we have all experienced, uh, which is how much technology and digital has come to the forefront of all that we do. So 
whether it's customer behavior shift, whether it's you know the work from home trend that we are all aware of from an employee standpoint, uh, whether it's distributor behavior, or, or even you know from from how healthcare gets delivered, you know all the stuff around digital health, uh, investigations and diagnostics being conducted remotely and so on and so forth. So I think there's been a fairly big disruption in terms of behavior uh, in each and every stakeholder in the healthcare and health insurance industry. I think the other one uh, which um, which has which is closer to home in terms of healthcare, uh, there has been a structural shift as far as cost of treatment is concerned. You know, we are all aware that mm. uh, you know PPE equipment, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, got introduced. But what we are seeing as as a financier is there's been a structural shift in health inflation, and that is um, you know that is something that we were hoping would go away. But you know what I think is increasingly clear. Uh, is that there has been a shift uh, as far as health inflation is concerned. Specifically, as far as heart disease and COVID is concerned, I think Dr. Shetty answered that very clearly. Uh, certainly in terms of myo myocarditis um, uh, and, and related um, uh, ailments, uh, you know, there's been an increase, but more in terms of shift in hospitalization, uh, you know, we've not, it's not that incidence rates on heart disease have gone up. In general, it's high. It's amongst the top five, as I mentioned. Uh, but has it necessarily increased on account of COVID? Uh, I think the data is, is not yet clear at this point, Ranmajan. But I think what is clear, uh, if you ask me personally, uh, just going back to the point which he mentioned, uh, is that, hey, it's important whether you're young or old, uh, important that when you're well, you should get health insurance. Second, and perhaps more important, given what I said about health inflation, what counts for adequate health insurance has gone up. So in a city like Delhi, mm. I think it's it's important to have at least 20 lakhs of cover you know, in any of the metros. That number has shifted up. If you had asked me this question three years ago, I would have said maybe 10 lakhs is good for, for Delhi. But now it's at least 20 lakhs. Uh, and this is because of the underlying structural shift in healthcare cost. So these are some of my thoughts, um, Aranvijay. Wow, very uh, insightful because with all the expenses going up, people have started realizing that if something happens, they're not going to just pay a little amount. It's going to be a lot. And uh, like, like, like you said, and like Dr. Shetty said, that do it in time when you're feeling good. When you're already well, that's when you got to get your insurance policy, not, not when you fall sick or when you're actually having the chest pain. This is another question for Dr. Shetty. I wanted to throw some light on exercising. While we all know that regular exercise is recommended to keep uh, oneself fit, what would you recommend people do to, you know, before they start their exercise regime? Should we do some screening before starting strenuous exercises like running a marathon, starting a treadmill? Can you please tell us? Okay, so the uh, for the exercise, first thing is there are two types of exercise. These days, youngsters want to get into extreme exercise, wherein they push their heart rate up to 150, 160, extreme exercise. If any young person wants to get into extreme exercise, they have to get a detailed evaluation of the heart. Because if their heart muscle is thickened, when the heart rate reach up to 150, 160, they can develop some serious electrical problem of the heart and heart can stop. Okay, so it's very important for them to get the ECG, echocardiogram, and of course a CT scan. Because if they have a pre-existing blockage, which is more than 70%, but patient, they don't have symptoms, if they push their heart rate to that level, oxygen consumption goes up significantly, the entire metabolism of the body changes, and they are vulnerable for developing a heart attack or an electrical disturbance, which can stop the heart. And about 1 to 1.5% 1 of Indians have anomalous coronary artery. That is, their coronary artery runs between the two pipes, at the height of extreme exercise, both aorta and the pulmonary artery, these two arteries get very, very tense. And they can squeeze the coronary artery and they can induce sudden 
uh, electrical disturbance. So it is very important that people who want to get into extreme sports must get a detailed evaluation of the heart. That's the first thing. Then regular exercise people who want to brisk walk, yoga, and all these people, whoever are doing it, uh, they should not push their heart rate significantly higher than the normal heart rate. Uh, but if they know the status of the heart, they can push it to any level because if they have a normal heart, there is no problem. And my advice for people, it is good to feel a 60-year-old man feeling good uh, that, you know, I'm jogging every day for two miles, three miles. Jogging hurts the joints and jogging is a kind of an extreme sport for a 50, 60-year-old person. I prefer them to do a uh, brisk walk and, uh, you know, the, the, some weights and uh, regular exercise. And the best exercise for a 50, 60-year-old person is yoga. There is no doubt about the benefit of yoga on people past the age of 50, 60. That makes them fit. All the aches and joint pains will disappear. The, they can postpone their joint replacement for hopefully, uh, the, you know, for many, many years. Many, many advantages of yoga. Dr. Shetty, every time you say yoga, I see a smile on your face. I, I can, I'm presuming, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, you are a serious practitioner yourself, I feel. Uh, yes, it was forced on me by my wife. Now I have become a great fan of yoga. <laughs> I used to do bodybuilding as a medical student. I yeah, because uh, all the prizes in in the showing of the muscles, oh. <laughs> and then I realized that you know it's good to show the big muscles, but your fitness is related to how agile you are, how fit you are from your joints and the back and the neck. Yeah. Well, uh, just want to thank uh, everybody who's responsible for getting me on board as. Uh, you know, to be here because what you, um, I'm a viewer right now also when you're saying that because we do a lot of intense exercise, it's the new in thing like you said, like to take your body to another. So I've written down that I need to get the CT NGO, CG, the eco uh, cardiogram and only then we should go for intense activities and extreme sports and this is hitting home with me personally. Uh, so I have benefited it from it right away. I just want to tell you. So personally, I want to thank you also. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Mr. Ramachandran, talking about tests, can you tell me what all tests are provided by health insurance companies? As a health insurance company, how do you encourage your policyholders to have a healthy lifestyle so that they have a healthy heart? Sure. I, I'll answer that question specifically um, on the healthy heart part. And Dr. Shetty mentioned three things. He mentioned the CT angio. Yeah. He mentioned, um, yeah. you know, blood work or a lipid profile. And he mentioned ECG. Uh, in all of our policies, Ranvijay, we do have, we do have yes. an annual health checkup. And they cover the ECG. They cover the lipid profile. And instead of the CT angio, we have what we call a treadmill test, which is a good forward-looking indicator of heart health. So these three we cover, and these are in all of the policies that we offer. Uh, you know, and I think this is the important first step. So we uh, we believe that it's important to know your health, and this is something that's incorporated uh, into our into our products. I think importantly as a company, uh, you know, our belief is that uh, we are not just in the business of coming in to provide financial protection. We're also in the business of partnering with our customers. Um, in the healthcare journeys. So three legs that we believe we want to, we play an important role in. One is exactly what Dr. Shetty said again, which is understand or know your health. So here we have very high quality content uh, that we've curated and available. So somebody wants to know more about heart disease, uh, they could come to our app and understand their health. The second is, you know, God forbid that there is, there is a health issue uh, we do have high quality doctors, uh, you know, Padma Bhushan, Padma, Padma Shri doctors, where they could confirm and understand their health condition a lot deeper from a human, uh, from a medical uh, professional. And last but not the least, we do help um, our customers, uh, you know, with all of what is needed on the healthcare side, whether it's 
a doctor video consultation, whether it's prescription drug delivery, uh, whether it's investigations and diagnostics, you know, all of that we make a- available to our policyholders. This is one uh, one part of what we do. The other thing that we do, uh, you know, uh, along the lines of what, what Dr. Shetty said in terms of fitness, uh, every one of our products now offers a discount for you to stay healthy. And we do one simple thing around Vijay, which is to encourage people to walk every day. And we say that, hey, if you walk, uh, we will reward you by offering you a premium discount on your policy, depending on how many steps you walk. Wow. Mr. Ramachandran, you have uh, one huge discount is coming my way because my uh, steps today are already 15,000. So, ready to go. Belkul, belkul. <laughs> yeah, so that is that is very nice, and you know, again, in like like I just spoke to Dr. Shetty that he is a man who's very with it, you know, senior in his uh, industry, a pioneer, and I have to say this about uh, you guys also as an insurance company, you're very with it because if you invent, incentivize people with discounts in India, yeah, and like we've spoken about the, all the devices that are available to us, you're also encouraging them to use that because then they'll know their uh, steps. And they will stay healthy, which is great for the insurance company also. It's great for them also because you're not just doing one business angle. You're doing a holistic kind of approach saying that, hey, we are in it together. We will uh, help you go to the right people. We'll help you. We'll encourage you to be healthy. We'll also give you the right resources. And at if time be, we'll manage everything. So that's that's good to know. But a discount. Very soon, you're going to get 50,000 <laughs> steps from me. <laughs> No, we do know that the Indian customer is very value conscious and we do our best. Dr. Shetty, another question for you. With regard to our heart health, are there any warning signs that one should keep a lookout for in our daily lives? Often we see that young people tend to ignore mild chest pains, assuming them to be something non-serious like gastric pain, acidity or heartburn. People say, Are you're young, you junk food. Khayoga. How can one differentiate between them? Can you suggest some emergency measures, do's and don'ts, if someone suspects he or she is having a heart attack? Uh, Symptoms of heart attack uh, is something uh, which is relevant for people who have no idea how their heart is. Okay, so it's very, very important that everyone should know the status of the heart. And if they know it, they don't need to worry. If the CT angio is normal, echo is normal, they can have all kinds of aches and pains here. They can just ignore it because they will never have a heart attack. Okay, that's the most important thing. Mm -hmm. The other important thing is if you have a family history, strong family history, it is very, very important that you should get Mm -hmm. all the tests done so that even if you have symptoms or no symptoms, the why I am not talking about the symptom 50% 50% of the patients we operate have no symptoms. 50% of the heart patients with critical blockages, they have absolutely no symptoms. And patients, heart patients with diabetes, they have absolutely no symptoms. It is called silent ischemia. Diabetic patients lose a sensation in the heart muscle. So whatever happens in the heart, they won't know. So, going by the symptoms is a very, very poor way of uh, uh, assessing one's uh, cardiac problem or the cardiac health. But if somebody feels any discomfort across the chest, which goes to the throat and the hand and the back, anything above the, uh, uh, in the, above the abdomen, if you have any discomfort on a person who is past the age of 30, they have to think it is heart problem until proven otherwise. Thinking that, uh, uh, looking at the hearing, the nature of the pain, saying that it could be, oh, this thing happens after food, if it happens, maybe it is indigestion, maybe it is that. That is a worse thing one can do because if you develop heart attack, you only have six hours of golden period of heart attack. In six hours, if you reach a hospital, if you are lucky enough to be seen by a doctor who picks it up and they give you an injection to digest the blood clot, 
your heart muscle will be saved otherwise your heart muscle will be damaged after the 6 hours you can spend millions of dollars you will never get back the strength of your heart muscle next question is for mr ramachandran it is a common knowledge that stress is a major risk factor in cases of heart diseases being md and ceo demanding work schedules and stress is an integral part of your job description what would be your advice on managing the daily work related stress uh, so you know it's interesting i'm 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 50 plus um, i have switched to yoga not that i was ever into what what is the term he used uh, extreme exercise not that i could have ever done extreme exercise but thankfully the urge to do that never struck me but i um, you know i do four five things to stay healthy uh, uh, none of this is rocket science uh, mm. one is i uh, you know i I'm, I'm i do exercise including yoga uh, and and brisk walking uh, to what dr shati said i'm careful about what i eat uh, moderation again what he said i think the part that um, he did not mention but i'm sure uh, uh, he he would acknowledge and is very very important is that we need all, we all need a good night sleep uh, so i try and get a good night sleep in spite of uh, whatever it is from a, you know that keeps me busy at work yeah. so a good night sleep and uh, you know keeping the mind at peace uh, i've started a bit of meditation that's useful so i think oh, this is what i do uh, but look uh, i think what to do is fairly clear to most of us but if there's one thing i want to convey to uh, to our audience here it, it is how to do it and uh you know how to make this a habit and I, i think that's the most important thing you know what to do is easy to discover but getting it done and make doing it as a habit is altogether something different and i've personally found three books to be very useful in in habit in habit formation and uh, sort of staying with good habits uh, ranvijay Uh, the three book recommendations that i wa- do want to share one is a fabulous book called nudge by cast sunstein uh, it's something that a lot of governments and policy makers have adopted to encourage good habits including good habits on health uh, the second is a book that i read called the power of habit by charles duhigg and the third one which is sort of doing the rounds and is a bit of a rage these days it's called the it's called atomic habits by james clear and i think these are very useful practical books to read on how to form good habits in general uh, but specifically on good health i am writing these down sir <laughs> we should compare notes after you've read them you spoke about uh, diabetes uh, dr shetty india is infamously known as the diabetes capital of the world along with that young adults are now being increasingly diagnosed with hypertension these two diabetes and hypertension are perhaps two of the biggest risk factors leading to cardiovascular diseases how should patients manage their blood sugar and blood pressure levels to avoid chronic conditions that significantly increase the risk of a heart attack also is there a difference in heart attack symptoms in case of a diabetic patient compared to a healthy person you actually did answer that uh, but yeah please go ahead sir the uh, uh, large number of uh diabetic sorry hypertensive patients uh do not know that uh, uh they have a high blood pressure large number of them and uh 70% of the hypertensives the blood pressure get diagnosed uh when they it was on a incidental uh, uh reporting to a doctor and if the doctor was kind enough to check the blood pressure and uncontrolled hypertension leads to brain stroke it leads to heart failure and leads to kidney failure and high uncont there is nothing like uncontrolled hypertension virtually every hypertension can be controlled and today you can get uh, a bp operators in flipkart or amazon for 2000 rupees and you don't need to do anything all you need to do is to wrap it around they give a very clear instruction and you will know how to uh, check your own blood pressure yeah. so it is very important that every house with the adults living must have a bp operators they should have a pulse oximeter <clears throat> okay covid has gone but pulse oximeter is very important especially if you have children at home 
children do get tummy upset diarrhea vomiting all kinds of problems checking their pulse rate is a very important indication to know how the child is doing because children look very very good until they collapse so all these indicators today these gadgets are there we should start using technology uh, at home so that you pick up these things at a early stage so essentially today chronic diseases people should stop looking at the doctors to manage them they should learn how to manage it and manage it themselves and that is a way we should move forward because today all the information is available and all the uh, gadgets are available so once the doctor gives you an idea about what is going on they should be able to manage these problems uh, themselves yeah uh, dr shetty uh, i mean the more that i'm listening to you i feel like not just that you're one of the pioneers of this but you're also a man who stays with it if you if if i may because these days the kind of gadgets you are talking about the track sleep the track rem um average heart rate for the week uh and we have the tools what i'm gathering from both your answers from uh, mr ramachandran and yours is that not knowing is a bigger problem than anything else not knowing your blood pressure not knowing whether your heart is good or not and that come boils down to a person where you can make a change amongst yourself your family your grandparents your parents and that is what i'm uh, you know that is the key right here because we have the tools these is lots of smart watches and everything is there and there is a very cute thing my grandfather who was an ex army officer he had the you know uh, that one and he yes. would do it on his, on my grandmother and then he would release it yes. and then listen to it and then he would do it to himself and and very few years ago 7 7 8 years ago my father who who got that white machine now you just have to press a button and it's become such a cute thing because my grandmother started has started yes. checking my grandfather's blood pressure which yeah. he's like wow uh, uh, in this thing punjabi hun tu mera khayal rakh rahi hai like you taking care of me and technology <laughs> has made it happen and if older people can adapt to it you know why can't the younger generation do yes yes and uh, and uh, uh, dr shetty you said something about uh not running for older people because running is one of those exercises that hurts your ankles your back your joints your knees everything whereas brisk walking pretty much does the same you just have to do it yes. for a longer period of time but the key is for older people to also lift wa- weights and you must be still doing yes. it because it's in your dna because the tissue is very important to have the muscle tissue and uh, yes. lifting but that doesn't affect the the heart is no. no. because you no, never I mean, with- you're not lifting 50 okay. kilos of weight 40 50 kilos for a contest it's a 5 kilos 8 kilo dumbbell yes yes given that cases of diabetes and hypertension has been on the rise what steps have you taken as a company to provide cover to this segment of people who are perhaps uh, at a greater risk of having a cardiovascular disease so ratmajai are uh, continuous endeavor as a company is to build propositions i use the word proposition not product because a proposition mm-hmm. in my mind is a solution to address specific needs of a customer and somebody who is diabetic or somebody who is hypertensive has very specific needs and here i'm very happy to say that a few months ago we launched a proposition into the marketplace that we call smart health plus so with it or with the times as you say and smart health plus does two things very important things one <laughs> is it off- it offers outpatient services you know uh, uh, the vast major or the majority of healthcare spend in our country is on outpatient and a lot of what we do as an as an insurance industry and as a company so far has been on hospitalization so smart health plus offers outpatient services and we've partnered with one of the best healthcare providers in the country to do that which is apollo 24 by 7 what it also does is it of you know people who have some of these chronic conditions uh, you know have a tendency to have more acute care events um which is to say that they may have a more frequent need to get hospitalized relative to somebody who's healthy otherwise 
what we've done is to have created a 911 service on with smart health plus which means that hey you know if for whatever reason you're feeling unwell call up this number it's going to be picked up by apollo trained doctors uh, they will triage and figure out what needs to happen you know it could be routing you through an emergency pathway where you you know go to a hospital uh, or go and see a doctor or if they feel they could manage that uh, that condition over the telephone they would actually prescribe what needs to be done they would tell you you know get these drugs and and we'd help deliver those to their homes or they would go and say get in get yourself tested for some of the things that dr shetty mentioned and we would pay for all of that the other thing that we have done is again you know we do know that these people perhaps have a higher need for hospitalization so what we have said is look from day 0 or day 1 um, you know you will be eligible to get you know hospitalization financial support from us uh, should you buy this proposition from us so that's what we have done very very excited something that we have launched quite recently uh, but a very very meaningful solution uh, for people who have hypertension or diabetes uh, run vijay so so you know that once i go back home to my parents and my grandparents i will be much more knowledgeable because of <laughs> all the inputs that i've been getting from you thank you so much again thank you um we have we have a few questions from our uh, listeners and our viewers sir um i am going to uh, take a couple of them and please let me know at any uh, time when because i know that you have to uh, leave urgently for something very important so the first question dr shetty is from uh, narayan who is from uh, bengaluru <laughs> given that it's navratra many people are fasting narayan wants to know if there are any benefits to heart when we are fasting if yes what kind of fasting do you recommend also on similar lines uh, rubia from coimbatore wants to know if intermittent fasting which is very popular now helps cardiac patients to shed extra pounds and if it is good for them thank you see the there are many things which have come to a practice these days in terms of weight reduction and uh, uh, the various dietary uh, changes and uh, uh, intermittent fasting and uh, high carb low or uh, the 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 sorry uh, low carb and high fat diets and all kinds of uh, i just i am not an expert in diet uh, advice but as a doctor dealing with the patients our human body is used to one way of lifestyle and the diet and what we eat what we do if you go significantly away from it there is going to be a, some kind of a backlash uh, because your body you are uh, you are essentially disturbing the body's mechanism of functioning it is used to one way of uh, uh, working so i am not sure whether intermittent fasting and all these things are good for you i am not sure i hope it is not bad for you now fasting some people who have a tendency to develop blood clots they should not fast they can fast but they should drink water that's very important these are the people who are vulnerable for developing blood clots in the legs blood clot in the heart and uh, so these are the fasting and uh, intermittent fasting and all these uh, various major dietary changes we do these are all extremes what human body will be subjected to and generally body doesn't like these extreme uh, variation in uh, the routine generally bodies don't like my next question is from uh, chandrakant sharma from dharmshala he wants to know how much oil or ghee is good for health venkat from uh, bengaluru also wants to know what type of cooking oil is good for consumption thanks cd uh, i have been in medical field for the last maybe 45 years now i have seen virtually every diet becoming a villain wow and a favorite and a life saver <laughs> okay wow. i'll give you one example of coconut when i was in the medical school hmm everyone blamed coconut for everything happening in the human body and a uh, down south we lived on coconut and we thought it's healthy 
now mm. americans have started drinking coconut oil to prevent alzheimers now wow. coconut has become a favorite for all the westerners thinking that it's going to protect you so ghee butter all these food stuff i don't think we should segregate as something good something bad anything in extreme is bad anything is moderation should be okay it may not be bad or it may be to some extent good so the ghee butter all this th- if you have too much of whatever however good it is in too much of quantity it is not good for you without sugar your body will not function even for a minute but too much of sugar will cause lot of problems so my recommendation to everyone is whatever you like you take it but in small quantity and that's the only advice mm-hmm. i have about avoiding this avoiding that today the entire uh, concentration has gone away from fatty food fried food to carbohydrates now everyone is saying that carbohydrates are bad that means essentially we can't eat rice we can't eat chapatis then what do we eat hmm. right so essentially we are going swinging from one extreme to the other extreme right so my suggestion is whatever your lifestyle whatever you are used to have it but in moderation that's all basically the the whole wise saying saying that uh, balance balances everything if you eat the right quantities and you do the right kind of exercise not yes. extreme exercise not extreme yes. food not extreme or sab kuch karo but yes. you know in the in the right quantities yes um now this one's a technical question sir um i mean not, nothing technical for you sorry uh, uh, but very specific question from hanumanta rao from shillong he's asking how to reduce triglycerides i would like him to get a ct angio of the heart ct scan of the heart then if the ct scan of the heart is normal uh let him not lose his sleep over triglycerides or a whatever cholesterol level it doesn't matter i just want to tell mr hanumanta rao that i have seen thousands of patients with very very high cholesterol level with normal heart and patients with normal cholesterol level with very badly diseased heart okay so it's very uh, we sh- one shouldn't lose their sleep for cholesterol first get your heart check up done if you have no blockages it doesn't matter what yes. the cholesterol level is simply drugging yourself with the idea of reducing the cholesterol just because your blood test reports looks good that doesn't really have a great correlation with what is happening inside your body fair enough sir um again the point here is to know your heart and i think yes. that is a key thing that will be a take away from this um paris mehta from mumbai has a question what percentage of blockage of heart artery warrants stent implant and what percentage of blockage can be dealt with by other non invasive means uh you can have very very critical blockages even to the extent of 100% and if the heart condition is good if the alternative flow is happening from the other sources they can be left alone we just because somebody has a blockage doesn't mean they need a stent or a bypass so there are many many factors which come uh, to play to decide which patient requires say angioplasty and most of the patients with blockages can be managed with the medicines yeah so the uh, essentially it is the percentage of the blockage alone is not the determinant to know whether the patient requires a stenting or a surgery it is the overall situation heart has three major arteries if one artery has the blockage other arteries are supplying that area and there are lot of ad- advanced tests available to know whether how the blood supply to the heart is and those tests are showing that the heart muscle is well protected we can leave the patient alone fair enough um there's a last question for you uh, dr yeah. shetty 
but I think you've already given the answer for it. But I will because uh, Amit from Bangalore wants to know if H I I T high intensity interval training is good or bad. Yeah, no. The my advice is uh, you're right. Uh, the uh, any extreme sport uh, on a day regular basis is not good for you. Definitely. Yeah, I would avoid it. We all should do exercise. but there is a way of doing the regular exercise rather than the extreme sports and extreme sports the way uh, these days the youngsters do it's very scary when the heart rate goes up to 160 170 even on a when the patient is on a treadmill when the heart rate goes up to 150 160 we all are standing uh, alert just to make sure that nothing uh, catastrophic happens sometimes this is this is very important for all these fitness enthusiasts to know because uh, they want to take their heart rate high and then bring it down by walking and then running sprinting again they keep doing that is that is that advisable you know as i said the uh, body will manage it but there will be a time when suddenly high heart rate can stimulate major irregularity of the heart if that happens it's very dangerous yeah Thank you so much, Doctor Shetty and Mister Ramachandran. This was an eye opener for all our viewers, I think, but also for me. And uh, even if people who don't have uh, uh, heart issues, they can make a difference in their families, in their parents, their grandparents. And you've given some uh, very smart and easy inputs, and uh, for even taking care of kids by just using some gadgets. And uh, as as a young father, young parent. those are also very valuable inputs thank you so much uh, dr shetty and thank you so much for answering all the questions that our audience is uh, you know sent for us some of them were uh, very you know uh, particular to targeted to some details but uh, i want to thank uh, neeba bupa for giving us this opportunity all of us were watching uh, such valuable words coming from you and your time is so important uh, thank you so much sir and i wish you all the best and i hope to one day work out with you when you're doing your um weights and uh, <laughs> congratulations to your wife cuz she brought you to the path of yoga <laughs> thank you thank you so much mr ramachandran thank you so thank much thank you thank you dr shakti thank you pleasure sir thank you thank, thank you very you. much thank you thank you good great stuff thank you ranvijay